Dire Team Ban. <sighs> dire Team Ban. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the TI7 SA Qualifiers. We are here with the Grand Finals. Between the SG the what? Sports. Oh my God! <laughs> they let us cast this. Who would think <laughs> the Grand Finals? I, unbelievable! I Goodness can't we got gracious! Oh, crazy. thank you, Thanks, Gabe. Guys. Thank you, Ice Frog. It's so sweet. Versus Infamous. Five you just showed some remaining. stuff. I don't know what that was. That was you don't want to know. That was some intense was some stuff. Secret on your code on my screen. <laughs> you guys are lucky that I'm not observing. <laughs> oh God! Radio All right, we are here. It is SG versus Infamous, game number two in a best of five series. SG Esports coming all the way back from the first round of the. <laughs> Dire team pick. Big boy. I, I also turn the music off too. Just... I've heard you being a control freak. Yeah. Wait, did I do it previously? Or was it Andrew? No, it was Andrew. Aha, uh -huh. see? I, I trust you. I trust you. I'm sorry, guys. All right. Anyway, we have a draft. It's a Rubik first pick. Oh, shocking. Five There's a clockwork left remaining. in the pool. Oh, now, yes. SG Esports, they're pressured not to pick the clockwork, and then Infamous could just take it for themselves. Clockwork. So, there it is. Oh, we have Rubik to counter your clockwork. You've walked into my trap card. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha. These idiots don't even know that Rubik counters clockwork. No, it's just, it's good, but clockwork's still an amazing hero, so... Oh, man. Let's see them again for SG Sports. They will go for something different. They don't pick up the Undying this time. They pick up the CM Clockwork, which is probably better. Uh, Undying had a lot of, I think, impact in the early game, but I yeah. think when it got to the mid to late game, as you would expect from an Undying, he didn't do much. He might he might still be in this game. I think Tavo for does have, this? like, in terms oh, of, uh, no, for SG Sports, just in terms of, like, offlane clocks, I think Tavo's got one of the better ones. <laughs> Look, it's Ben Jazz Hero. <laughs> what is this? It's Juggernaut. It's the Jug. He feels very confident on this hero. That and Life Stealer and Ursa, I guess to a certain extent. Razor, he did okay on. So go, uh, Infamous have they? They've gotten their their Ten typical carry for them. Yep. They have the Juggernaut ready to go. I and think this is really good because of the fact that they are more likely to play the offlane clock than most teams. So getting the Jug early is very valuable. Uh, because time. in the 1v1 matchup, Jug does just, you know, you get stuck inside Cogs, he starts battery assaulting, you just spin, you hit some Cogs, you're out of there. You don't care. Now in the old days, you guys might remember, Cogs used to go through Magic Community. Remember Life Stealer? Oh, yeah. It was like it was like the counter to pick Clockwork. You would hook him, you'd Cog him. It was the worst shit ever. Bad. Yeah. But uh, those those times are indeed <clears throat> quite far gone. Yeah. It's a great pick now. It sure is. We will see how it turns out for Infamous as they will ban out the commander. I don't know what the hell just happened. I just, just kicked the grade off the wall. There's an air conditioning <laughs> unit below us, and you just kicked the grade right off of it. That's impressive. No actually. problem, guys. Uh, the uh, the Queen of Pain, which we thought I think was going to be banned out last game, uh, in the two in five somewhere in the second phase, remaining. does get banned out now. But Tomato at least got one game in this best of five on it to take a quick victory. Yeah. Now Reserve what will he time. grab? I honestly think that was ADR's like worst game I've ever seen, and it's not necessarily Radiant his fault. It was just rough. Like, I don't think I've seen him play that poorly in the mid lane. And I guess it's just the motto was really good, and he had a rough time in terms of like heroes he was against. I don't know what happened <gasps> to be honest, but it didn't look very good for SG's. Dire team pick. Yeah, we'll see if they can turn around now. Uh, the nice locker is still left in the pool, someone who we talked about a lot in the other regions because that first phase banned, but hasn't been getting banned in SA, so we just saw him get snuck in by Matthew. Uh, I could see the potential as well as we move forward here, so someone to keep an eye on. And, and SG Esports, they're, they're going to reveal it. So we'll be the Tavo Radiant bat to help the clock work. You played this in the game against Meepo, uh, and they're the squad of Midas Club Elite, he did very well. Uh, he was getting the lasses that pretty much won them the game, um, as you would expect. He was finding those kills in the Meepo and other heroes that did pretty well. So the Batrider coming out, pretty good stuff. Remaining. Pretty good offlaner. And we'll see how it works out for SG Esports. Five um, seconds remaining. I talked about the chance of it going mid last time around with Andrew. Obviously not going to be the case unless there's like Reserve a game. time. It's something that happens anymore. It doesn't really happen ever. Yeah. Then like the four position, which Demon used to do for complexity, like... Two months ago is not is not a thing. It's a nice setup too, just by banning the Knicks in the second phase as well. Um, he's already a very good position for hero, but he's of course the best one up against the Knicks or the uh, Bat Rider there, thanks to the Firefly. So infamous. Uh, we've all seen the train protected from them in terms of the four, but up against the Bat Rider, that's not very good. Uh, and what what really is good against the Bat Rider in the four position? I kind of like Kunkka, honestly, in terms of like current popular heroes. Okay. I feel like X is pretty good. 
can be a decent save. Uh, using torrent and stuff inside of cogs and can be pretty helpful. Even like uh, throwing the boat in there to help out someone. Night Matthew, you have oh, oh, he's going too. for it. Let's, I'm Don't down. I mean, it's I fine, always I like Night Stalker. You know that. But the void comes out to slow the bat rider down when he gets the lasso off. I mean, the darkness is gonna. I honestly think Matthew is one of. The, he's so good at roaming, and I think that Night Stalker game last game showed he was just still good at it. Um, and he was just. Able to oh, our title says best of three. Ma, is it? Five seconds remaining. Reserve time. Pretty good. Woo, 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 woo. So we have now a uh, fourth pick for SG Esports. They are looking for their carry and their mid, an ADR hero and a HFN hero. Let's see what comes with that. And I, I wouldn't mind a little bit more bursts to go with the uh, the Bat Rider. The Lena's gone. The, po the uh, Queen of Pain's gone. Puck's, like, kind of okay. Is there any chance they go for that Necro that you were talking about, or is this not the right draft for it? I don't think it's the right draft for it. Okay. Um, I, I think they like it better with, like, uh, you need at least a little bit more sustain, I would think. Uh, maybe if there was some sort of a mid that also helped out with that, Shadow but I, none really come to mind. Uh, it will be the Shadow Radiant Fiend, though, which we were talking about as a, a potential one. With the Clockwork already there, we get our little soul combo. And uh, a lot of teams have been going, like, that Clock SF... Uh, well, I guess for the past like two months, there was a lot of clock SF openers. It saw a loss success, and then it slowly dwindled down as teams were way more aggressive on the Shadow Fiend at the beginning of the game. They would gank them, get rid of those souls early, numerous times, tons of pressure on them because yeah. people built their whole draft Five around it. And now everyone's moved away from that. Uh, Danish Bears were the only ones who were really still doing the clock SF in, in the first phase, and it Result wasn't time. going that well for them despite having like a fantastic player on it in 747. So I, I like it a lot better when you kind of get in the second phase. You still have this pretty OP combo of getting the cogs early, but they haven't had the previous three picks to try and match up against your Shadow Fiend. And right now, they don't even have like a BKB cancel, uh, which is pretty helpful against the SF. I'm surprised they let it through to begin with. The bands didn't focus on the Shadow Fiend. When you see the clockwork and you think, okay, well, they've played Shadow Fiend before. It was either either just forgotten or they have a plan against it. Which It's, it's also just like, honestly, it is one of those ones where you just kind of forget because clock's in every single game now, you know? Yes. Before it's... And, and there's so many better heroes. Like, I actually think Lena would probably still be better than Shadow Fiend in this situation. Like, Lena matches up a little better with the Batrider, in my opinion, just to help with that burst. So, still yeah. a good pick, but... Yeah, we'll see if... Uh, they, I mean, they will get off to a fast start in terms of souls. They'll probably have the Clockwork helping out the Shadow Fiend in the beginning beginning of the game as well, just to make sure they get, like, a nice enough flame where he can just start really to excel. <laughs> kind of like... Oh, my God. <laughs> it's a Moth Dota game, ladies and gentlemen. I was going to say I like the Death Prophet for, like, a little bit lane dominator since the Queen well, is gone. Is I, but this, this is, like, beyond. Well, this is what I wanted to talk to you about, about the Death Prophet, because you were mentioning it. It's somebody that could just, like, get ahead and just... I guess start kind of death balling out of control is just a really good lane dominator. Ten seconds and like, oh, and the remaining. thing that you were mentioning is like you focus three heroes on it and you still just turn around yeah. and kill everybody. Yeah. That is remaining. Viper in a nutshell. That's the Viper. And you need to gank it. That's another hero that you need to gank early on. Like the first minute of the Reserve game, you want to gank him before he gets his corrosive skin up. You can gank him later, but it costs a lot more to do so. Um, but he's a great laner. Listen, this is a hero that is a fantastic laner. He owns the early to mid game. And then if you don't win at that point, you might be in some trouble. Yeah, but uh, that means that's now two lanes that Clockwork's going to have a hard time having an impact on yes. with the Jug and the Viper. Yeah. So times are tough here. Clock and, and Crystal Man are not, not, not big yeah. friends of the Viper. No, you like Freezing Field and kill yourself against <laughs> the Nether Dogs, and it's awful. You're not getting auto-attacked as well by the Viper, who will just chunk you down. I'm interested to see in the build, what build he goes in terms of like phase versus treads. Radiant will he go for the early pick. Dragon Lance or the Hurricane Pike? I don't really know what like the the big uh, big items are for Viper right now. Kind of like Tide. Tide. I don't think Infamous have played it very much lately though. Tide was back for like a month and then just disappeared. Yeah, newbie were weird. like, no guys, I swear it's actually a good hero, and everyone's like, I don't think I it think, is, guys. People were just like, I think KP is really good, not necessarily the hero, yeah, because he's a great Tide hunter. Remaining. But that was the only team that was running it. Yeah, you're right. There's like one or two other teams. IGV ran it. I, IGV He's ran that. Uh, do you remember? I don't know if you watched the Zotac. It was like Tide Death Prophet all the time. They went yeah. to the Tide Death Prophet opening. It was like the same sort of thing. But um... you know, they have tried their Nature's Prophet lately, and it was only in the group stage. And it was actually against SG Esports, which did they win? No, they lost. Oh. It was like one of the few games Infamous have lost this entire really time. So I'm not sure if they'll go back for it. It, it is a classic, but maybe they want to aim more towards... Oh, Offlane Puck could actually be pretty good. Oh. All right, the face is void. It had to be some sort of AoE control. So I like the Shaker ban. I would have liked the Puck. I still don't uh, know, like... 
It's just Viper, really, outside of the, the Chrono, right? Like, Jug's not going to do anything. Uh, the Rubik stolen Freezing Field, oh, obviously. True. Yeah, good point. <laughs> Every single got fight him. in the end got him. What if he just steals Ten Firefly and then goes where the, the Chrono's going? Genius. They just Chrono, it's just, oh, it's going to work so great. Remaining. He steals, he steals, level, uh, he steals the, the short-range rays and he can't even get inside the freaking Chrono. He uses it. He's also decent late game at the very least, but... For the most part, it'll be his first like three or four chronos that really matter and impact the game. But you're right, the damage is a little lacking. So maybe someone beefy here for SG Esports in the, the carry role. I mean, the Venge is like, Sven. yeah, Sven will be a little bit more control it's for pretty them. good against Jug, too. And okay, against, well, Viper kind of owns and that's the problem. Maybe like a Weaver or something is kind of okay, too. Just someone more mobile who doesn't get totally messed up. Remaining. Um, there's still the Bristleback, too, but they have a lot of Silver Edge carriers, so I can give them some trouble. I'm going to go with the Venge. Troll Warlord. Yeah, okay, that's, that's a good choice. Yeah, okay. That's a, a really good way to add some more burst into the lasso here and give them a good chance at actually killing people during the duration. All right, I'm interested. Uh, I'm more surprised by the Void pick than I am the Viper pick. Viper is coming together... It's been in a lot of games, actually, in this in this tournament. I've seen it in every, I think, region for the most part. Oh, and you know what they can do, too? They What's can that? do Faceless Void safe lane, go aggro with Benhaz, Matthew, and Excel. That is a scary aggro trial. Yeah, and then they can pull the clockwork top, and then there's no help for Shadow Fiend mid. So then they get a 1v1 of Tavo versus Queen Tekka, which... Queen Tekka. King Tekka, uh, which doesn't really matter. It's not great for the Faceless Void, but you'll take that if it means that uh, the Shadow Fiend has no assistance mid. I think uh, Infamous have the, the best like setup here. Um, some good things about Troll, though, is that if you know the Chrono's coming, you can often get the blind off on the Faceless Void, Five and we've already talked about how they're remaining. lacking damage, so it's possible they could have some trouble bringing him down to the Chrono with that like early uh, first attempt at a gank. Yep. I'm very curious to see how this game turns out. This is... It, it feels pretty different than that first game in terms of heroes and what we're trying to accomplish. We are lacking both a Puck and a Quap. And we're, we're replacing them with two completely mid, different mid laners. Mm. So it's just it's very interesting to see how this is going to turn out for us. Well, very important. There are a ton of taunts in this game. In fact, all five heroes on the rating, I do believe, have taunts available. We'll see how many we actually have equipped. That's that's like super important stuff in Dota 2. Oh, did I say the Radiant? Yes, yeah. the Dire all have taunts. Sorry. Their Troll, like, Shadow Fiend. Where's that Viper taunt? Because oh, I want it. Yeah, no. You're not too bad, though. You got three out of five on the Radiant team. Just missing the uh, the Viper and... Uh, Who's the other one? No, Rubik. No, Rubik is a taunt. It's Viper and whoever the other one was. Night Soccer? Yeah, Night Soccer. Yeah. No taunt for him yet. The Void one is also top tier, though. So, oh, yeah, the Shuffle thingy. Yeah. All right. Do you like your sound? Sure. I forgot it last game. Oh. Well, you did pretty well considering you had no sound. I feel like it's really hard to camera without it. Prepare for battle. Uh, only in certain games. But we have it now. Total number of teleports canceled by stun by 25. One? Two? How many stuns do we have? We don't have a lot of stuns. Well, I would say. Oh, there, there is the bash factor on both teams. So I'm going with two. I'm, I'm going See, that out. stun, though. Because remember, Telekinesis is not going to Really? Yeah, we're, we saw it the other day. He tells me as the TP happened. And All right, like, Bash has got to. It's got to. I'm going to put one because I don't trust it. First player to get 15 denies, SF, probably, considering he's going to have 12 of yes, them. Yes, good the point. Great, great logic, Mott. <laughs> you are nailing this prediction. Really this Thanks. is actually the, the, All right. the smartest thing that I've ever That is heard. a Telekinesis, a Void, a Blade Fury, and guess what? It's First Blood again going to wait into this. They got one last game, too, didn't they? I think they did. Yes. We've had SG in the last Let's series. them. Okay. Uh, most kills at game end. How long will the game be? <laughs> thirty to thirty-seven. I'm going. Yes. I'm going up one. Okay. All right. I feel pretty confident in these uh, in these predictions. So SF, he's like he knows this happening, right? Yeah, he's not going to go up there. He's, even, he's not even going to bother. Clockwork might go scout it out. All right, they're going to bring them both up to scout it. Oh, they could just kill these guys, but Viper's already gone, so... Ooh, this is troublesome. I think if they miss need to leave, and they will. Yeah. Sick and Apum starting to get stacked up, but they're not close enough to get the cogs. Uh, luckily, they will... All right, ADR, it's clear. Get out. Come on up here, bud. <laughs> we got the bounty room. You're not going to die. <laughs> it's going to be a fun time, we promise. But uh, they will, in fact, run couple of wards placed down. This Radiant one was placed as the uh, Dire one was already up, so it was already pinked by SG Esports, which means there's a very good chance that SG, you know, this is here. Yeah, I think I see the Courier. Does not have a Sentry on it. It's just the South. Waiting until they've spotted the Night Stalker, probably. And they'll see him now, so the Courier can make its way down here. Yes. 
or back to the base, maybe to pick up a sentry, actually. So as we assume, <laughs> King RD is going to be here for a few minutes or so. We'll see how long he actually stays. They uh, they didn't do an aggro try, though. So that means that there's no pressure. Like, the there is pressure on the Viper in a sense of, like, they actually have brought some assistance mid. So we'll see how he gets on. They were maybe too worried about giving a lot of space over to Tavo, which is a fair thing to do, actually. Like, he could have perhaps run over that Thesis Void lane. We'll see how King Tech does as well. But already, as expected, the S is getting off to a fast start. Viper only having one CS. As he gets Nether Toxin at a couple more levels and the clock leaves, this will be an easier lane. Uh, but as of right now, this is kind of tough. Matthew's already gone. They're going to look for a kill bottom. The Blaze Fury is there. Tavo getting voided up, and he might be dead again. And he will go down. So another two kills going the way of Venhaz. Uh, actually, one kill, one assist, excuse me, as they gave the other one to another hero earlier on in the game. And they've mm -hmm. already... King RD's thinking about leaving mid lane, too. I do like how this has worked out now, though. Because uh, I hadn't really considered the pressure that you can put onto the uh, the Bat Rider. With the Crystal Maiden, like, not helping anyone, then it's it's not the normal situation, right? You expect the position 5 to be helping, so the Void has a little bit of a rougher time. But Crystal Maiden, of course, is so greedy early on that the hardest part of the lane to face this Void is just ignored. Yeah. Uh, it becomes very simple for him. He's going to have plenty of CS. He's even at the tower right now with this Creep Wave. He's going to get level 3 uh, pretty soon here. Oh, nice play by uh, Cat, though. Gets in here. He's going to find himself the uh, Seder as well as the Bounty Rune for them to face this Void. So it's a big CM value play to the nice and gold from his uh, opponent here. 40R, ADR, and Tomato trading in the mid lane. Is that a hasty clock? He's zipping. Right to he that mid lane. might be able to get this kill. I don't know. He has a salve. Oh, a he has no fire. points in the corrosive skin. He doesn't, but he still might be okay. He's going to try to eat his way through. Now gets dropped down. Tabo will, in fact, get the kill on Excel bottom. He will trade his life away for it. So a two for one exchange across the map as SG Sports now get on the board with two quick kills. And uh, we're going to fight recap for that. I'm curious as to how that worked out for the Bat Rider since he was so far down. But it's not showing yet. Uh, what are you looking for? Because I have it right Oh, there now. it is. There's a new one. So he actually still did gain 157. So it was a net gain on both sides, but still more beneficial for the Radiant with the kill. Um, Viper does go down, and this will help BSF a lot. He's now got some jungle sacks he's heading to because the wave is pushed in towards mid. Uh, Tomato is going for 2-2. Two, two. He's not getting a single point in corrosive skin yet, which is very interesting. Usually you'll see like one 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 two one one definitely like that. Uh, for the shadow fiend. Yes, just the fact that you're trying to keep up with the stupid amount of damage that he has because of the souls early on in the game from the clockwork. It so. allows you to last a lot of years. Yeah, true. exactly. So yeah, you actually have a chance against this guy. And the harass is pretty good too. Look how much damage he does in one auto attack against ADR, who is like four armor. But he's gonna bottle up now. This will make things easier for ADR now. Twenty four last hits to the sixteen. Of course, a uh, I believe assist along with it. Roaming through, they're going to go for a smoke, and it looks like Tomato might fall again. He is very far up, and he needs to leave. The supports are missing. They will ping it out, and he needs to get out now. As the creep wave pushes in, they could still maybe even dive it's this. It's really tough to get, because he's gone for the greedier build on Cat, which, I, I mean, I definitely approve, especially with the new changes of Frostbite, but oh. without saving the point for the 1-1-1, one, 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 the slow. Oh, Tavo is dead again. One more auto attack. Excel will get it. Now roaming around mid is going to be King RD. He might have been spotted. I think he was. I think Tomato just saw him as it was at oh, nighttime. If only he waited. King RD, yeah, he needed to wait, exactly. And so Tomato sits towards the left side of the uh, mid lane, in fact, back behind the tower, and he should be safe and secure in terms of getting some last hits. Well, it's a little bit of damage, but it's uh, some waste of time for Crystal Maiden. Can't be accelerating herself, and now it's time for the Rainy to try and bounce back a little bit further here with Matthew and that nighttime bonuses. He might just get killed, though. Firefly's not up. It will be in one second. The Void to come out. Hunter in the night. See ya. The thing about that buff, he he's dead. That old Night Stalker's dead oh, he's right there. Definitely dead without that. But, I keep uh, think I keep forgetting about it too. I'm yeah. Like, There's no way he can escape. Oh, just kidding. I mean, after you've watched like thousands of hours of a hero, and then suddenly his whole like like that's <laughs> a giant change, right? <laughs> it's totally understandable. Dude, that buff actually made him top tier. Yeah, it, it really, it legitimately did. Like he was not. He's gonna. I mean, he first, probably wouldn't overall. even be here to be honest with without that, right? Like it's such a safe place yes. to be now. That escape. Pretty insane stuff. He's now smoked up, running mid. This illusion. Scan. Is this play going to work? Scan. Is this about to work? All right, yeah, he didn't yeah. go for it. His smoke didn't pop. Matthew, too smart. Yeah, he's got that next level intelligence. He's like, wait a second. I know how smokes work. <laughs> <laughs> Although you've seen that plenty of times in the, the most important of games, people have messed that up. Maybe he thinks he wasn't close enough? I don't know. He's going to go top now. Maybe he can find King or D or somebody. And he's under vision, though. Uh, he has bomb for that ward. So that's not going to work out for Matthew. Oh, they even see him place a ward. Dunzo. The vision that's battle has been counter. won. 
I get SG had like the vision advantage early on too last game, I think. Yep, they did for sure. And then they kind of lost it, but they are very good at warding, I will say. Andy's trying to bait this in by hiding right here. It's like, oh, surprise, it's two heroes. Battery salt, Matthew's probably dead. I was, he can hunt her tonight, but it's tough. Oh, the bad. That, that was kind of hurt. Damn, that's rough. Uh, bottom lane, however, there is a Firefly, and Excel looks like he will die. Uh, phase Bolt to come back, but uh, Tabo will take a tower hit. Ben Haas cannot get there in time. He'll try to phase oh, up. Maybe, maybe, maybe he can. He doesn't have level 6 yet. He's got to try to get through these creeps, but he doesn't have the Blade Fury. <laughs> He's just not fast enough. Yeah, that was just some pretty mir uh, miraculous crits there. So Once again, the pressure comes back up top. King RD playing Bodyguard first to kill the Night Stalker, and now they're going to roam on in. And Oh, hey, these bounty runes? You didn't want any of these this game, did you, King Decker? I didn't think so. He's fine. He's level five already. He's gonna walk and look for it and realize that it's not there and be very sad. Damn. Okay. Still 25 last hits. The advantage is again very slight in SG's favor, but I think they're setting themselves up pretty well for this like mid game. You know, they killed Tomato once. He's not getting the most farm comparatively to the Shadow Fiend. Um, you're getting good farm on your full top. You've killed the Night Stalker. This first night time is not working out as much as they would have liked. Top of my die again. Oh, that would be big. Down once more. Void, Blade Fury. And he's dead again. This is one hero that has had a rough game. It's Tavo. Yeah. I mean, he really is kind of like this keystone, though, because if he can get uh, this Blink Dagger up and help accelerate King RD with a couple kills, then he gets a hook shot. Then you have double initiators and Troll and Shadow King can work around that. And uh, Whereas the Radiant, I don't know, like King Tekka, all he needed was the levels. You have that natural Blink in the time walk. He's even got three points in it. Venom, uh, the Viper is really farmed, honestly. I mean, considering the situation he was put in against that Shadow Fiend with the pressure early, Mono's fine. He can build into this Hurricane Pike if that's what he's gonna end up doing. Yep. The standard, the stock standard he is treasure. Especially out. against Clock, too. It's just like, why it's not? It's super good. It's yeah. super useful. In fact, I think he might go for the Force first just to have it against the Clockwork. Maybe not. We'll see. I don't know. Dragon Knight is pretty good. It's really hard to pass that up. Yeah, it depends on your levels and your build. Like, if he just starts pumping everything to cross the skin now, I'm sure he'll just be fine with the Dragon Lance. Yes. Agreed. And we shall see. He did max out the poison attack first, so I love it. I like the aggressive playstyle. Um, they have Viper Strike too, because sometimes Kira would wait to scale Viper Strike at six. He would wait till like ten or eleven, I think. Yeah, something like that. Uh, I think there was something the wrong with the ulti back then too. Uh, might have not. Been it working. used to be bad. Yeah. Well, and this was after the change where it used to not take immediately, like it does now. Yeah, that's true. So, that's a very nice one. It's a very important change. They'll look for King Tekka, perhaps. There's a lot of vision over here towards this mid and top lane of Infamous, coming in from SG Esports. Who just smoked? Uh, the Juggernaut and the Rubik. And Jug is already on his way top, but he TP'd under a ward. Chrono? Yeah, they're looking for that Chrono kill, but it's not going to happen. I don't think it's going to happen. This, this ward is still here. Not that they'll see the Rubik or Ben Haas. You can already see backing up his troll. HFN yeah. is in the tree. They're not trying to make any mistakes right now. If they kill King RG, that's great, but they want a vision of him. He's in the tree line. And they know, they're probably like, oh, but look at this stack. Yeah, this is actually fine. This must have been part of their plan. It was like, look, if they're not there, like, clearly he must have seen it. How many did he just steal? He got one CS with that player. Oh, that's a little disappointing. I believe. Right. Yeah, it was only level one, so it's probably just one. So that's not that great. However, so the push is commencing down bottom. SG Sports will work on this tier one tower. Uh, Top lane? No. Maybe a Chrono, they're thinking about it. Yeah. It's more like some, oh, here we go. Now they're going to find the Blade Fury. The Cogs will come out. They can jump forward. Chrono Spear missing. Uh -oh. That is not great coming out from King Tech. It's a one man Chrono. Yeah, and it's a bad one at that. They're looking for more damage. HFN in the tree line. Everybody getting low from Infamous. They've got to leave Ben Haas, I believe, is dead. That is devastating for Infamous right there. That's one of the worst possible things that could happen. King Tekka looks like he will get out. The TP came out from the SF, which will grab him. I think the, the kill was split up. But... Well, folks, you said it in the draft. I know you're all thinking it. What the hell are they going to throw into this Chrono? Nothing. And they're not quite sure either. I guess the Juggernaut. <laughs> hey! Uh, it is not going to be an easy one to have those first three Chronos go well. And that's, to me, that's what's so important about the offlane void. You, ha you have to make them work. You know, you have to have these perfect rotations. You want the Chrono to happen, get some gold, and put the fear into the enemy team. But that, that was not fearful. That was the fear into his own team. Like, no one wants to stand near they him just, now when he throws these Chronos up. They continue to smoke under these wars from SG Sports. Kind of god. Oh, oh my god. Wards all over the place. Oh, they really are. It's still going to have the desired effect, though. Uh, if they're pushed away from the tower, they can get a lot of damage on here. But, yeah, as you said, they would have loved to have, like, an Omni Slash kill or something like that to go along with this. And they can even think about defending, but they have so many resources down bottom now, including the Teleportation Scroll already used from the Troll Warlord, I'm sure. That's why he doesn't have one. Tavo doesn't have one. Cat doesn't have one. Ain't nobody coming back up top. Yeah, this is Size old King RD. 
This is a great and a half. For some fast, bro. It's not bad for instance. I don't think they have that great push to begin with, so any trade is probably fine. I don't know how and this works. And pretty interesting that uh, not going for the ulti at all. Made up until level 9 here, just because there's no Blink Dagger on Tavo, and chaffin has been farming, so he doesn't really care. He just raises stuff in the jungle. He hasn't even been putting that pressure in the mid lane, really. It was only that one tiny little push that they had with both supports when uh, they had the failed rotation wrap around on the tower. But Tavo now coming to the shrine. He's very close to the Blink Dagger. Would love to get a little bit of a slow here. Ben Ha is looking to try to see up on the high ground. A silence will come out. Matthew will take some damage. Ben Ha has just scout out any rotation oh, coming King up from the high ground. King RD is so close to six. Yeah, he was trying to get a six and go for a hook shot, and that will back away the Viper and the Night Sucker. Oh, there's a tome on the courier. That's painful. <laughs> he just needed to sit there for like two seconds longer. Maybe, well, more than that, but... That was crazy that Ben House rotates over that way. Yeah, and now you're just like, all right, well, we might as well wait for the Blink Dagger. I'm going to buy my Blink Dagger, Ooh. and we'll go together. Ben so. House is going for Defusal first. Not even like Mantic Defusal. Defusal straight up. Straight Defusal. Okay. Hmm. Uh, a game like this is probably missing something, I'm sure, as to why this is amazing, but. I'm sure. Nothing really amazing. strikes my fancy as being crazy. Just a little bit of extra control. I guess you could kite the SF and the, uh, the troll. That's pretty much all there is to it. And the Batrider after the lasso. If you are not lasso. By the way, there's a Blink Dagger for the uh, Batrider from Tavo. Despite having a rough game, he actually has it somehow. And then there's also the level 60s you mentioned from the King Arty's Blockwork too. So this is going to be an interesting night time. As it is night time and you have a nice soccer on Infamous. The question is how do you approach this from SG's point of view? And how do you approach this from Infamous? I wonder if he's thinking that it adds the most damage in Chrono with Omni Slash. Like I'm trying to think of other... I guess that would be a Mask of Madness. But then that's kind of a dangerous item against that lineup. But Maybe you're right. It's that interesting. It, it is quite a bit of damage in there. Compared to something like just a Yasha. And obviously like a Manta doesn't do anything right And Haz is going to spin. Hookshot is ready for King RD. He's thinking about using it. Excel nearby. Void will come through. The silence is up as well. It's too late. The Omni Slash. Not enough. There it is. The crit comes out perfectly done. From Ben Haz. And now there's the battery. So Hookshot stolen by Excel. And the Cogs come out. But he traps them inside of him. But the races are going to come through. Excel is in trouble. One more auto attack. Matthew might be next. He's got to get out. He's got the Hunter in the Night. Coming through. Tavo gets off the lasso. They all rotate up. And this this will be perfect. Matthew tried to split the blade tree, but he does not have the mana for ATP, and oh. that will be Ben Haas falling as AB, well. A triple. It is. It sure is, buddy. That is a three for two trade coming out as SGE Esports rotate perfectly. That is exactly what they needed. Oh, I think we got ourselves the best of five on our hands now, here, guys. This yeah. is starting to look a little bit better. King Tekka down bottom. He's trying to put together that Vlads. He wants to give them that early push with the Viper. Yeah, this is one of the things you see a lot from like the safe lane void. Uh, more often going towards this like Vlads right away and we all group up and stuff like this. But being able to do it out of the off lane this game is really nice for him. Thanks to having that good 1v1 matchup for a long while. He's not like stunted into going just for a blink dagger or something like that. Or just like treads half an item blink. So there's there's definitely still a scary window here i think that infamous can capitalize on they just gotta get those like first round of items and, and like halfway into the second one maybe find themselves one good smoke where they're not under award from sg esports cat just doing so much work this game farming the whole time while he gets his vision down so what you're saying is don't smoke top because that's really the only word that's in any danger of actually revealing them it would seem so and they gotta watch out for these hook shots though they also, to go again. Tomato, when he gets his four step, maybe they feel more confident. He's able to maneuver around the fight, especially against this clockwork a lot more and even catch up. But King Tekka might get caught here. He has hook shot. They're going to look for it. Time dilation comes out. That'll hit onto one. King Tekka has a chrono that he might want to commit just to get out of here. Another time walk to hook shot to follow up. Um, they have the chrono. He's going to try to turn onto the clockwork here. I don't think he has the damage. The bash will come out. He will time walk away. So chrono now expended. And they will not secure the kill, but I think they're happy with that ultimate being used from the pieces void. Yeah, they didn't even lasso. You're fine with that. I, I would trade Hookshot for Chrono for sure. Because mm -hmm. now the second Hookshot's back, they're going to try and make an, a, a move here. And they can even think about Roach 100%. They have Vlad's on Troll Warlord. They have a Shadow Fiend with two points and Presence of the Dark Lord. Let's go. There's no Chrono. Like, this Roach is ours. I think that is 100% the play right now. Yeah. It's still sketchy. It's oh, this is going to work out so well. I think they might actually catch Ben Haas there. They've smoked up, like, not in a time where you might expect the aggression. And ben Haas does wisely back away here. He's just kind of aimlessly wandering around here trying to find some creeps. Oh, and he feel Man, they are really that spawning out these gonna movements. That going to get countered. <laughs> uh, probably. Yeah, they definitely saw that. And uh, the sentry is in range. I don't think the observer is. It's just outside the range. He finds him. Lasso to come through. It's an Omni, though. They Cogs, he's got the Blade Fury. This is going to be difficult for them to grab this kill. He's got Omni Slash as well. A lot of right-click damage. He's got to get out of here. The Silence, he's got to get out. The Firefly, he doesn't use it. He cancels it, but they will turn two, it looks like. The Tavo 
uh, Batrider going down as well as the Clockwork to fall. So it's a double kill for Tomato trying to run further. A force forward. Matthew's got Void and now Cat is going to be next. He will try for the TP and he actually might be successful. And it looks like he will get out in time as the Void is down. So perfectly done. Meanwhile, HFN is going to split push into the mid lane. The Void will TP up. His uh, Chronosphere is still down for 48 seconds. Um, but that is still not bad. You get Ben Haas, yeah, you lose two, but you get the enemy carry, which is never bad. I know, but you really wish you'd drug survive. I mean, he went for the maybe call it greedy play of getting the healing ward down first so he could heal up during the Omni Slash and stuff, but maybe there was too much damage from the Flame Break or something, and he was scared he was going to die anyway. Mm -hmm. But either way, they will now be the ones moving into Roche with this Blast down on the face of this board, and this would be an amazing grab for them. I mean, this is just like complete god tier. I'm pretty sure if SG Esports will able to secure that Roche, this game is like 70% over. over. Yeah. Excel ready to go. Flare to the straight steel for Excel. Chrono is in 13 seconds. This is dangerous. All five coming in from SG Esports. They have a hook shot ready. Nature has rolling axes. They will pop the darkness. There's a ward on the high ground, which SG do not know is there despite Dude, the seeing it shot. being placed down. Coming in Don't from the back lines, ADR Matthew coming in. They have the hook oh, shot to come cogs. through. The cogs will be there. The play period. They tell to come out. Tavo jumping in. There's going to be the Viper Strike. It's a one for one. They drop the Chrono. Tavo is going to be first. Can they get anybody else? There's the freezing field. King Tekka is still. Alive. They grabbed the Aegis for Tomato, and now he's going to try to fight. Jumping forward, Cat will be next. Can he deny himself? Certainly cannot. ADR trying to run as well. Tomato's not close enough to be able to grab him. ADR will be able to get out, it looks like, with Matthew not being close enough for a void. It is a three-for-one trade. No buybacks expended. Perfectly done from Infamous. And it's just too much and too quickly, and a great telekinesis coming out from Excel to make sure that King RD is not inside that Roche pit. Yeah, I really like the whole idea of it, though. Like, you get the cogs on everyone, the Batrider goes over, the damage starts stacking up, he gets on the other side of the wall, throws the napalms inside, but the follow-up just couldn't get there. King Tekka hits a big chrono on the outside. It was a scary window uh, as that chrono was, like, ticking down, like, was, five, oh my God. four, and he's just waiting and holding bated breath there, but... This game has now Looks like he's gonna nice get solo them. kill nicely done from HFN. He's had a muted, but I don't want to say muted, but uh, very quiet impact, but a big impact at that. Yeah, I mean, 1-1-4. One, one, and four, and so Excel creeps. is going to be Cliff, and with OTP and Firefly on top of him, he's probably dead too. So both supports will fall instantly after they take Roche. Yeah, it looks like he knew uh, that there had already been a Napalm or something, obviously, so no hope of stealing Firefly. You're just dead. Rough. Ooh, I feel like the game got like evened up basically from that Roche. Um, I think things were looking a little scary. He didn't have the edge that they on the radio. He just solo kill Oh, he does get no, he doesn't get blinded. The hookshot comes out just to save HFN just in time. He's trying to eat his way out. Cat is an Aegis. They all need to get down here if they're going to try to kill this man. He's still super tanky. He's going to pop the wand charge. One more auto attack. He's not there. He's trying so to get slow. it. He will. Tomato gets the kill and will lose the Aegis. But here comes the rest of the team. Matthew trying to fight. No darkness. They're looking for something they don't have. Chrono King RD trying to cog. Matthew looking for a void. Can he get him? King RD is very close, but it looks like they can't grab him. They need a time dilation, but it's on cooldown. They will get a battery salt off from King RD. The void, he actually gets fogged. He's so close. And they're juking and jiving behind the tower. It's getting dangerous now. Here comes that defeat of blade. And King Tekka, he's got the time walk. He will use it. The raise is not there in time. And the creep wave cleared. Into the tier one tower they go. Infamous take a two for nothing. Well, we should count that Aegis. That is a game where the talent choices versus the skills really matter. He had the points into the of skin instead of the talent. And he was up to level 15. He had skipped it. And that, uh, the, uh, sorry, the nether toxin. The nether toxin is the reason he died. Because that troll was so low. Like, it was getting pretty scary, so. Oh, uh, Viper. You cannot, you can't do that. <laughs> you just can't it do that. It looks good. You're like, this is worth it. <laughs> this is definitely fine. Viper's not that tanky. We have three of our heroes here. Just kidding, we're dead. Oh man, and they're gonna continue to push on. I don't know. This is very. This is. You know what? They have the chrono. There's no Aegis though. This is dangerous. Yeah, but they have chrono. I mean, if you can just get them the back lines and they get a tier three, tier threes are so good. I think they might just back here after like that. Yeah, they're the wave's gone. It's it's a little scary. Get the hell out of there. Force them all back to the base and try and exert a little bit of map pressure here. Try and get some vision down. This is apparently a Midas game from Matthew instead of last game. He's got it. He just purchased it up. So Midas is done. And now they're starting to take the vision control back for Infamous. Look at this one more place down. Although King RD might, or someone might, uh, count this pretty soon. They don't have any sense. All right, man. It's a 3K network lead again for Infamous. And is it the same story? They look good in the early game for SG Esports, then Infamous just come back and crush it? Because it's kind of looking similar right now. The one good news for SG Esports is they have a very farmed SF. 
they do, but this faceless void has just turned into a uh, position one at this point. You know, he's right up there with the juggernaut. He's not the offlaner. It's basically going to be Knife Soccer offlane this game. I thought they might go. Is Blink still a thing on, on board? I feel like that might not be a terrible I, idea. I think a lot of people are just. It's too worth it for the damage, honestly. Like, you should just rely on your time walk and just. Yes, it's going to be more difficult, but the value you get out of, like, a 2,000 damage item is just ridiculous on this hero. Be it Yasha, be it the completion of a Manta, be it Maelstrom, or, like, two-thirds of a Diffusal Blade. It's, it's just too good that uh, it's better to just rely on your allies to try and set up the stuff, or maybe set... I mean, you have a Viper, too, right? You just send in Viper. They come yeah. on Viper, you need three heroes to kill them, so you chrono three heroes. Hey, there we go. We got them. It's a perfect strategy. This is how the uh, Viper faces Void combo works. Both teams are being too great on Tier 2 Towers, it looks like, with Battle Trance and uh, oh, this is, I think this favors SG Esports. I, you know, you can't race them to the next one, so you're the one who's for Viper has no TP. Oh, that is not good. Rubik has no TP. This is not good. They know and that they don't have TP. This is very bad for Infamous. Fresh Esports, this is perfect. The Chrono Spear to jump in, but where's the Viper? Where is the damage? They're trying to find this troll. The Blade Fury, there's the last one to come through the hook shot. They want HFN, the Requiem to follow up as well. The Cogs, Ben Jazz is in trouble. The Omni Slash will go. This is just so bad. The Viper finally getting back. Maybe they can turn this around. They will. Two dead, and King RD is going to be the third. A double kill. They need a void. They'll find it on the Shadow Fiend. The perfect target. The Viper Strike will come out. He'll Manta, Freezing feels stolen by Excel. He will drop down. ADR will at least get one. But Tomato gets the triple kill. It was looking so good, Trent. So freaking oh. good. Saved by the Courier. Flying in with some TPs as they saw the trade potential coming. And able to get back. And yes, losing your Void isn't too good. He only lost 267 gold. But not too big of a deal. You'll definitely take that trade of Excel all those other heroes. Gets, he got 20 gold. Oh, and a boy. Hey, there yeah, you that, go. That's the support life right there. <laughs> nice steal as well there on the uh, Freezing Field. All right. God damn, that was terrifying. That was. Imagine if they don't get that courier out there in time. Just that could have been a tier three so quickly against this lineup. You just like, oh man, SG Esports thought they had it too. That was so close. Oh, I would have thought I had it. Once uh, yeah. I saw that chrono and there's like no heroes there's there, I'd no be like, damage. oh my god, guys, we just won. We won. We won yeah. the game. Like the chrono ends, no one's dead. Void goes down, and then, and then the viper shows up. And then up. suddenly, hey. <laughs> <laughs> and there he was. There he is. Yeah, yeah as he tends to do. Again, remember that this is a viper. And uh, the myth of the late game Viper, we'll see if it uh, comes true or not. That's a very difficult thing for it to happen. But Talents have definitely given him some help, you know? He did go for the 16 agility, which helps. He can also go for the attack range. And uh, maybe the armor will help out. I don't even know. He didn't go for the 15 damage early on, but whatever, it's 15 damage is no big deal. And the 725 health is really hard to pass up on that hero. It's really it's, good. Yeah, and as cool as poison attack affects building is, sadly, it's just not, you know, doesn't you spend a lot more of your is. game. You know, attack range helps you siege just pretty much as much as the uh, the poison would, and you then you use the attack range for fights and farming yeah. and the whole game. We'll see if Samato picks it up. I would imagine he goes for the attack range, though. Yeah, I, I'm I don't pretty think sure. really need a... I've seen it before. It is pretty funny. The, the building is very unhappy. Like it's, it's all toxic. You hear that? You thought Jakiro was sad. Yeah, it's not great. Um, but we will have a 6k net worth advantage with Roche respawning in at least one minute for um, either SG or Infamous if they want to find it. The troll has picked up an SNY. As we saw last time around, there is a blink coming out for him as well. This is huge because the blink Radiance blind is something that you desperately need attack. for the Viper. However, I believe you can DKB it off. I'm pretty sure. Um, from Mr. Troll Warlord, yes. Yes, so he's getting a BKB, so it won't be a big deal. And then, of course, you have the Blade Fury as well for the, the Juggernaut, but it's just really to jump on people and try to get those badges off immediately. Get spin certainly helps, but... All right. Speaking of dispelling off, though, I hadn't thought about the Halberd this game, but that could be a really good item, actually, for the Night Stalker post Aghanim Scepter. It's good for both teams, isn't it? It's, yeah, but it's super good against Shadow Fiend. Uh, I guess it's really good against Viper, too, to be honest, but... Uh, Viper at least will have this BKB. Um, Shadow Fiend a little bit of ways away from his if he wants the Silver Edge. Here we go. There is a smoke coming out. Oh, they're just walking across. Was the that river. under that ward? That looks like it was under that ward. Uh, they're, yeah, they're they trying to walk see in. Them. Them. Yeah, yeah. Uh, did they not have a smoke? They must not have. That was interesting. Well, they they know the dire are around here. This is dangerous. They were trying to. I think they were trying to catch them that awkward moment when you walk out here. Or it something. Took, but... It took them a while to get together though. I think it's best to just back away, guys. I'm 1,500 gold away from the Agon Scepter. The whole game changes at that point. Can we chill? Damn, dude. There was not a single teleport chance to fight this game. Rex, that's insane. The people just they accepted their fate. I guess so. They're realists in South America. Should have known better. <laughs> don't even just don't even try to TP. You're dead already. Um, I could have sworn there was one, but I guess not. 
Anywho, we are getting close to some big items, as you mentioned, the Aghanim Scepter for the nice soccer. Tomorrow is building into that BGC. Where's he going now? What's going on, guys? He just left bottom lane. He's like, team, what? Oh, sorry. <laughs> There's like just in the middle of last hitting. What a, what a team player, man. Four creeps there. Um, he's gonna get here. The tower's gone. He contributes nothing. Yeah. And he's like, it's oh, daytime. I, don't I know wish what, I stayed punching. What creeps. am I doing here? Why did I even come here? Now, King Tekka was looking for a chrono. However, a well placed ward. We'll see that uh, King Tekka has to beat in, and so they will not find anything. Matthew, however, will find that in fact Roshan is up. However, he does not have darkness for 50 seconds. And or it's night or time an time. That's probably why he moved up here to help secure this area. Make sure the team doesn't lose the fight, but. I could see SG Esports winning this next fight. They just brought four staff out on the Batrider, four staff out on the Clockwork. So we already see uh, that uh, ADR has plenty of damage. Yes. Uh, you know, this game, as bad as it is for or has been for SG Esports, there still is plenty of time for them to get back into the game. And again, I don't want to keep harping on it, but it is a Viper. Or, so something to keep in mind. Uh, the Jug, however, is building into the Manta, so he went for the build anyway. He just did it in a reverse order, which yeah. is interesting. I guess that yeah, works. Neat. I guess that actually kind of helped. I mean, the damage from the diffusal was pretty good for the bottom fight. Yeah, definitely. Got the uh, Chrono going, but either way, they are pushing down bottom pretty fast. We do have TPs mostly available this time. Actually, Void, uh, Vipers is not. He's 18 more seconds. Oh, they have snuck. If only Night Stalker had punched those creeps. Uh, right. The Glyph will come out. They will back instantly. They have forced them away. Yeah, SG are like, we are not getting caught oh, by this Oh, now they're all TPing. Roche canceled? Oh, we can't see him. I thought he was getting he did not have a gem yet. Oh, 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 oh! My Look, god, that was happened. close. He almost canceled the full TP. They're gonna have to roast, by the way. Right now they have to run back to the This is Goodness. super awkward. You are doing this oh, into a creep wave. Oh my god. Oh, this is so dangerous for both teams. SG Sports, I think they're gonna get it. They're about to grab this Roshan. It's so low. They need to get in. They need to go for a Chronosphere, but they're not gonna be able to do it in time. They will take the Aegis. They will lose that, but I don't think they really care about that that too much. Yeah, like that's like get the hell out of the situation. Oh no, Chrono's right in there. Four step in further into the pit. Viper Strike comes out. He snatched it. He actually got the Aegis. They were trying. They were just dwindling around too much. They only have the Chiefs for 40R. He's not even gonna use it. How did he what? snatch that? What? Roche died what? so long ago. He must not have had a spot. And they were discussing who takes the Aegis. I don't know what we do here. Cat. Oh my god, and he dies too. How does that happen? I didn't even what? see it. I mean, there's no way. That that's not on you. I like I wasn't even looking. I saw four. No, I saw no Chronosphere. This is what happened to me. I thought he got four staffed further into the pit, and I'm like, wow, he just got thrown in deep because they just bought those four staffs. Then I looked at his hurricane plug, and I was like, why would he send himself that deep in the pit? And then suddenly he had an Aegis. They just left it. They, they left just, it on the ground. Why do you just leave the Aegis there? No, SGE Sports, this is not good for you. You're gonna lose your tier three tower. The Night Stalker has an Aghanim Scepter, the perfect time for it. The, uh, excuse me, the Viper is going straight onto these buildings. He did go for the attack range, by the way, as we expected. Boo. <laughs> Boo. I want the poison attack. Oh, man. He's going to get forced in. They're going to go for the Cox Force. It's about the oh, Chronosphere on to three. And here comes Tomato. The Omni Slash will come through as well. And this will be hopefully too much damage for Infamous. And SG Sports, they've got to find a way to get back into this. They will lose two. They'll buy back immediately for this Troll Warlord. Looking for the lasso. Can they do anything with this? They're going to grab Matthew and drag him in. It might only be him. Can they even get this kill? SG are too far behind. They're getting pushed and corralled inside their base. Tavo is going to be next. Now the damage is being dealt as he has the SF taking or doing some damage with his auto attacks. The ultra kill is there for Tomato, and Can now get he's looking for the Rampage. 40 R and SG Sports. They had a great start. They won't give it to him, though. It is not going to be the Rampage for the Viper, unfortunately. Oh, oh. Rubik has stolen it, guys. It. But um, shush, it comes <laughs> so. out from Matthew. Oh, my God. SG Esports. Oh, they have Roche, and they let it go. Infamous with a turnaround and a half. Told me to tilt your way out of a best of five if I've ever seen one. That happened. But you guys are witnessing a beyond godlike Viper here. There is still a little bit of dueling going on. And shout out to Matthew, man. He has played these past couple fights so well. He's throwing out these urns. He's barely surviving. He's keeping these like heroes in the back line just completely disabled and annoyed. Batrider right, can't get blinked off when he wants them. Oh, they're all dead. It is now going to be two nothing infamous unless something miraculous happens for us in the sport. And, uh, that's rough. They had the Aegis. I don't know if they win that game even with that Aegis and Cheese. But there's hope. I mean, that was a good play. They found the moment. They did some great map pressure. And, and that's kind of stuff about SG Esports that you see those beautiful moments. The way they forced them back down bottom. The immediate TPs to the Shrine. They have the prime positioning. The scouting from Cat. Yes, he was dying, but still, they had the Aegis. You know, there were some four staffs there. They they could have been like four staffs at the back of the pit or something from the, the clock and the bat and just bailed out. Yeah. But they, uh, they couldn't find it. Yeah.
Maybe it was the ultimate bait. Maybe they were hoping they could kind of lure him into the pit and yeah. then pick it up, but it, it certainly did not work out that way. I mean, Tomato, this entire game has been pretty much unkillable, and it's going to get worse when he gets level 25 if he goes for the armor. And we'll see if that's going to be because it might not be to that point. It's Mega Creeps at this point for Infamous against SG Sports. SG Sports, they're all sitting in the well. Uh, I think they're just talking right now, I would imagine. GG has not been called yet, but it will be soon, I would imagine. Oh, they're literally just sitting in the well. Yeah. <laughs> they even scanned him too, and Vimis is like, yeah, they're all there. This is only in South America, ladies and gentlemen. But uh, SG Esports, they have the capability of bringing this series back. But it is oh, here it is. Long Come on, up your stats. Five-man chrono. He's only in South America. Boom. Four-man oh, chrono. Dude, they're literally, it's only three. I mean, this is just, he didn't even get oh, the curry. Even get there. How many times have come through? They will lose one. They will lose two. They might lose. Honestly, this is the only way you win this game, right? You sit in the fountain and hope they all die. So it's working. <laughs> they did. However, you they know, we say that in every other region as a joke. <laughs> But in SA, it's actually possible, as joking. you can I'm see. To be honest, I thought you were joking as well. I was like, "Is this how you do it?" I guess, and uh, it doesn't work sadly. So that should be it. That will be tier fours. They have buybacks, uh, but SG Sports they will go down to rather O2 in this series. It is a best of five, as previously mentioned. And if there is any team that has the comeback potential in this region, it is of course SG Sports, and we shall see if it is going to be the case. So very well played from Infamous. Yeah, you did. You, you were right on that timing, dude. Yeah. That's Viper's, uh, that's Viper's wheelhouse. 